Thank you for coming. I wish to speak with you both in a place where privacy was assured. We quite understand. What was it that you wished to discuss? With my father's passing, the seat of the Archbishop lies vacant. And so, in accordance with canon law, I have assumed his responsibilities. I should stress that this is a temporary measure. It was never intended that the Lord Commander of the Temple Knights serve in this capacity indefinitely. Quite the opposite. The statutes specify that I should surrender my powers as soon as a conclave of the senior clergy and the high houses have named a new archbishop. But in light of recent events, that would not seem appropriate. I confess I did not expect you to divulge quite so much quite so soon. The details of the Archbishop's plans, perhaps, but the true origin of the war and all it entails? I too had concerns. But when the Warrior of Light is witnessed returning to the capital upon the back of a dragon, one's options are rather limited. Mayhap I could have concealed certain details, but for how long? And at what risk? Should the truth have come to light in the meantime, how would the people have viewed my silence? After a thousand years of lies and secrecy, I could not well abuse their trust and hope to be believed. The time for deception has passed. I only wish the people agreed. That some would deny the truth I had anticipated, but not this many. And among the few who acknowledged that my father had to be stopped, no small number questioned our methods. If they suspect a coup, it will not be long before some turn to violence. It has already begun, and that on both sides. Men and women of the cloth are being harassed in the streets. Some have even been assaulted in the broom. Hilda and her people have formed a watch to help us maintain order. But such measures will not prevent the unrest from spreading. For all our talk of peace, the people remain frightened and confused. For their sake, we must bring the Dragonsong War to a definitive end. And we should be glad to help you, Sir Emmerich. But what precisely would you have us do? We wish to treat with the dragons of Annex Trine. To that end, I would trouble you for an escort and an introduction. Annex Trine? You would speak with the Dofnir then? We must needs open a dialogue between our peoples. Acting as my representative, Lucia will extend an invitation to their leader that she might visit us here in Ishgard. Were she still with us, I would of course have beseeched Isel's assistance in this matter. But as she is not, I must ask that you aid us in her stead. Will you do us this favor? Thank you, my friends. Lucia, I leave the rest to you. In the wake of the Archbishop's fall, the nation of Ishgard trembled, the faith of her people shaken to its very core. For a thousand years had they fought and died, certain of the justice of their cause, only to be told that their holy war was born of the sins of their forefathers. What then for those brave men and women, thus stripped of their righteousness but to despair, to deny the truth and decry its speakers?
And what then for those whom they defamed but to hope on? To have faith in a brighter tomorrow? A tomorrow in which man and dragon might live together in harmony, then as distant as the very stars in the heavens. Yet while we dared to hope, deep within his lair the enemy lay, gathering his strength. Nidhogg, now possessed of his two eyes and the body of the Azure Dragoon, prizes to which he had laid claim at the very hour of the hero's triumph. As desperately as we sought the solace of peace, the great worm craved the misery of war. Nor was he alone in his misbegotten desire.
I'm terribly, terribly sorry to have kept you all waiting. You need not apologize. We arrived but a moment ago ourselves. Pray, allow me to introduce Kral, who has recently come from the Charlian motherland. She has generously offered to assist us. Oh please, think nothing of it. A trip to Eorzea was long overdue. You must be the Warrior of Light. Yes, you certainly do look the part. <laughs> A pleasure to meet you at last, miss. And who is that I spy but young Alpha No Levy Yu himself? I dare say someone's grown an ill or two in my absence. Or are those lifts in your boots? We, um... <clears throat> Miss Croyal and I met at the studium years ago. I shall forever be indebted to her for her sage guidance. It was no small task keeping him out of trouble, believe you me. The youngest ever to enter the studium, him and his sister, 11-year-old prodigies. Suffice it to say, social graces were not among his list of talents. Striding up to his seniors on his first day, head held high. What was it he said again? Thank you, Kryle. For what? I haven't finished yet. Would you care to attempt a more dexterous deflection? Um. <clears throat> Mayhap we should save this delightful conversation for a more fitting occasion, when pressing matters do not demand our undivided attention. A bit much, but better. I can tell you have been putting your skills to use here in Eorzea. Henceforth, I trust you will dazzle me with your eloquence at the first time of asking. Right, on to more pressing matters. Finding Minfilia and the other missing Scions. I gather you have new information to share with us. A new approach, actually. Tataru recounted the tale of your escape, and it gave me an idea. Simply put, assuming Thancred left some manner of trail when you whisked him away, as is almost always the case with teleportation magics, I am confident I can find and follow it. Then what are you waiting for? The wherewithal to do it. The fact is my abilities aren't quite up to the task. Not in themselves, anyway. If I had Master Matoya's crystal eye, on the other hand... Then let us all call on her forthwith. I think it best that you explain your plan to her in person. Is that trouble I smell? 
Or did you forget to wipe your boots on the way in? Forgive us, Master Matoya. We will be sure to wipe them on the way out. And may I say how glad I am that age has not yet deprived you of your senses. Ever so quick-witted, aren't we? To the detriment of your manners. Well, out with it then. What do you want? Pray, allow me to introduce myself, Master Matoya. I am Kryle, of the students of Baldessian. I hope you will excuse our unannounced visit. Baldessian, you say? Ah, oh, yes. The old coot set up shop on the Isle of Val, didn't he? Regrettably, our Order's headquarters and the Isle itself were obliterated by a magic of immense power. I have the blessing of light to thank for my own preservation. Cryo, you too possess the Echo. Well, yes, of course I do. Our order is devoted to uncovering the mysteries of Hydaelyn and interpreting her will, particularly through the study of her gift to us. It was in the course of these studies that I met and subsequently befriended Minfilia. She and I have rather a lot in common. I had no idea. You weren't supposed to. Not that I wanted to deceive you, you understand, but precautions had to be taken. Yes, yes, that's all well and good, but you still haven't told me why you're here. The students of Baldessian are gone, and there is naught I can do to change that. But the science of the Seventh Dawn can yet be restored, and my dear friend found. You have in your possession an ancient crystal of light, one you call your crystal eye. I believe I can use it to focus my abilities and locate one of the missing scions. And there I was, thinking you might want to make use of my years of experience. Oh, wait here. Long did I ponder the nature of this crystal and its familiar radiance, but never did I suspect it was a crystal of light. On the cusp of an umbral calamity, souls blessed with the power of the Echo invariably appear. To aid these her chosen warriors, Hydaelyn bequeaths to each a slither of her strength in the form of a crystal of light. But as her strength wanes, so too does the potency of her gifts. This crystal, born of an earlier era, is infused with a power far greater than those of this age. You could travel the length and breadth of the land and not find a crystal even a fraction as pure. Its value is beyond measure, as are the risks inherent in its use. No two manifestations of the Echo are alike. I, for example, can converse with beings of every shape and size, excepting beasts, contrary to what others would have you believe. Language has nothing to do with it, of course. Rather, I am sensitive to the whispers of the soul, their intent, their very essence even, the traces of which serve to guide the elementals to Yishtola. Far-fetched though it may sound, I believe that with your crystal eye, I may be able to pick up where they left off and follow the remaining trail to Thancred. That is, if I have your permission. Well, the poor sod's not going to find himself. So, as long as you don't drop it or take it out of my sight, you may do with it what you will. Thank you, Master Matoya. Then let us begin. Black Shroud, the trail continues. 
continues to the north and west, towards a mountain, the foot of Som Al. It was a near thing, but he was not deposited within the rock. I think. The hunters of Tailfeather know those lands well. I say we begin our search there.
could be Thancred. We must hurry. This day, we reclaim the reins of history. This day, we rid ourselves of the Asians forever. Fools playing at heroes, all of you. Is this how you believe you can save your world? We can and we will, Asian. You shall see. Or perhaps you will not. So you are the warrior of light, the savior of Eorzea. It's a wonder you didn't come sooner, what with the primal and all. Lost a step, have we? Have care. The ether moves strangely around him. It would seem we share a common enemy. Mayhap you would tell us who you are. Shall we show them? Very sporting of you to interrupt, but so be it. Mark well our faces, warrior of light, for we are the warriors of darkness, walkers of a different path, and we shall meet again.
warriors of darkness. Really? Tancred, are you all right? Pleasantries can wait. I'd rather not be here when the Nath arrive. Agreed? Suffice it to say, our reunion was not at all as I pictured it. Waiting until the last instant to join the fray. Tis plain you have not lost your appetite for the dramatic. My appetite for the dramatic? Have you forgotten the circumstances of our party? The heroic last stand, the tunnel filling with light, and then... Oh, had I known you intended to use forbidden magics to deliver me to some god's forsaken wilderness, I would have thanked you in advance. Thancred. If nothing else, you might have warned me that I would emerge from the live stream in the altogether. Eventually, I managed to fashion knives from some obsidian I found, and set about hunting for meat and hides. Given that I am not all that skilled in leatherworking, it's probably for the best that I met the Vath before I was reunited with you. So you were the fleshling clothed in skins of whom the storyteller spoke? A description which fit me as ill as the skins themselves. Happily, I was able to trade with the Vath for garments better becoming a man of refinement. From them I learned of Ravana, and of the great warrior who had once laid him low. And thence did you conclude that were you to track the Primal's movements, it would surely bring you into contact with the Scions once more. It seemed a reasonable assumption. I could think of no one else with your enthusiasm for slaying beastmen gods. Until now, that is. Ah, yes. The self-proclaimed Warriors of Darkness. Tis only fitting that they stand in opposition to the Warrior of Light, I suppose. I glimpsed the leaders past, if only for a moment. They were confronting a man in black. An Asian, I think. If these warriors are capable of doing battle with Asians and Primals both, they must be possessed of powerful protection. Protection not unlike the Echo.
Even as the Scions celebrated the return of a long-lost friend, honorable men plotted to deprive them of another. Honorable men, to whom Sir Emmerich was no hero but a scheming patricide. Honorable men who would fain wash the paving stones of foundation with the tyrant's blood. Honorable men whose knife in the dark was the spark which set the city aflame and who sang as it burned.
I do not mean to diminish our accomplishments, but until we identify the ones who ordered the fire set, our work is far from finished. Between the various conservative and religious factions in Ishgard, I dare say there's no shortage of parties who would like to see the status quo preserved. Do any likely suspects spring to mind? Far too many to count. Ah. Lord Commander, your wounds... ...are healing well. Thank you. Time is of the essence. Lest we forget, these men would sooner put their own city to the torch than see it change. When our enemies learn that we have apprehended their arsonist, there is no telling how they will react. Lord Commander, an armed mob has seized control of the vault. And now we know. Tell us what happened, sir. Spare no detail. We were directing refugees into the Basilica, as you ordered, when all of a sudden, men brandishing weapons were all around us. It happened so fast, my lord. We had no time to respond. They've taken the refugees hostage and barricaded themselves inside the vault. And they sent you to deliver their demands. They, the true brothers of the faith, demand that a conclave to select the next archbishop be held forthwith. Furthermore, they, they declare that you, Lord Commander, are guilty of patricide and high treason, and that you must surrender yourself at once to receive of the Fury's judgment. Ridiculous! I mean, do they honestly think that executing Sir Emmerich would change anything? That the truth will somehow die with him? These fundamentalists rage against the passing of the old ways. Unable to accept there can be no going back. Given the fanciful nature of their demands, a peaceful resolution does not seem likely. If the hostages are to be rescued, it will be by force, I fear. Agreed. Lucia, take a contingent of knights and establish a perimeter outside the entrance. At once, Lord Commander. Hilda, I need your people out in force throughout the broom. When word spreads of the situation, the friends and family of the hostages may try to take matters into their own hands. I will not give these militants more targets. I shall lead the assault on the vault. Master Alphino, can I count on the support of the Scions? Of course. We are in your debt. I shall join you as well, Lord Commander. Your assistance is most welcome, Lord Atwarel. To arms then, friends. Time is against us.
This knife does not heal! Where is he? Where is he? You have nowhere to run. Release the girl and surrender. Surrender to whom? The blasphemer who throws wide the gates to our enemy? Who breaks bread with him and calls him brother? Ungodly swine! I would sooner die than surrender to you. Is it godly to spill the blood of an innocent child? To burn the homes of your brothers? Tell me, priest, is that godly? Do not speak to me of godliness, heathen! Your father's blood is on your hands, as is hers! Well met, Knight. Mayhap I chose an inopportune moment? Not at all. Pray forgive us this most unworthy reception. We are honored to have you with us, and right glad of your aid. Fortune delivered the child unto me. I had but to receive her. Thank you for saving me. Thou art welcome, child.
never did I think to be indebted to so unexpected a saviour. But full glad am I to be so. Friend of Izel, warrior of warriors, I had hoped to meet with thee. I bear a message from my sire. From Freysfelder? Upon returning to our lands, Nidhogg's shade did sing unto his brood, and they for skies unknown did then take wing. This thou must know, for your fates are inextricably bound. What of Estinian? Is he truly lost to us? Such matters are beyond my ken. I but bear my father's words. Take from them what thou wilt. Fare you well, mortals. It is as they say then. A great white dragon swooped down from the heavens to rescue an innocent child. A most unexpected turn of events, but not an unwelcome one. The people will not soon forget this day. Yet how will they choose to remember it, Sir Emmerich? And will these events serve to bring man and dragon closer together? or drive a deeper wedge between brothers. After a thousand years, the world these men once knew is changing, and with ungentle swiftness to boot. Though their actions are misguided, their sentiments are only to be expected. You may be sure that others will rally to their cause. I share your desire for a lasting peace with the Jovanians, I do. But I would not see it built on the bones of our countrymen, nor on our own. I see much of Horsifar in you, and I could not bear to mourn the passing of another son. Lord Edmund.
that Vodofnir should chance to arrive even as the girl fell. Truly, I could not have planned it better myself. Ah, good. We were afraid you might have left. A shield, my lord? Fit for a true knight. An expression of our gratitude to you and yours. Long overdue. There is something else I would discuss ere you part. Something which cannot leave this room. My father will soon step down as head of our house. Sir Emmerich was not the only one to fall under suspicion following the death of the Archbishop. There are some who believe my father complicit in a coup d'etat. Thus he intends to renounce his title to absolve our house of suspicion and secure the support of our peers. Surely there must be another way to convince houses Dorandere and Zamail. So I said to him, alas, he will not budge. Ever since I was a child, I knew that I would one day succeed my father. The thought of it filled me with pride. Yet once I learned the day was at hand, my heart was filled with naught but dread. Our legacy is built upon the lies of our forefathers. In accepting this title, am I not perpetuating this injustice? Why should I become the next Count? You sound just like him. Aye, I suspect that is what Horshafon would have said. To aid those in need. When you look on that shield, I trust you will remember his words. And should I once more find my resolve wavering, I ask that you show me the way. You are a sister to Horshafon. Will you be a sister to me as well? Come, Emanelaine. There's much to be done. For Father, and for Sir Emmerich, and for Ishgard. We share the same blood. Pray excuse us. Those were the days of promises and vows, of tentative first steps into an uncertain future. A future shaped by the choices we made in ways we could never have foreseen. Born of good and evil, of light and darkness, and shepherded by our hand. Be it for weal, or be it for woe.